everyone, Hungry Reader here. I hope you're ready to dig through a rotten log for a bunch of delicious beetle grubs, because it's time for more Every Bear That Ever There Was. With new baby and moving day out of the way, we have now exhausted the two Berenstain Bears stories that took place before Sister Bear was born. Today's book, The Berenstain Bears Go to School, is in fact the debut of Sister Bear as we would know her from now on. When summertime ends and weather turns cool, most little bears are ready for school. When the weather turns cool? Not for another couple of months in my district. It had been a wonderful summer for the Bear family. They had gone swimming and boating at the lake. They had picnicked in the woods and taken many walks along sunny paths. And of course, soaked up hour after hour of cartoons. One evening at supper, Brother Bear said, I'm getting tired of summer vacation. I think I'm ready to go back to school. Said no kid ever. This year, Sister would be starting kindergarten, and she wasn't quite sure how she felt about it. They also weren't quite sure how to draw the bears at this point. Sister's pulling a real Picasso face here. <laughs> also, Mama Bear is making a cool octopus face here. She liked being at home with her mother and father, her books and her toys, and all her friends. Again with frogs and butterflies for friends. It's, it gets a little confusing here in bear country that everything else is also sapient and able to be befriended. The next day, Mama and Sister packed a lunch and took the long walk down the winding dirt road to bear country school. Hello there! Come right in and look around, said Miss Honeybear in a loud, jolly voice. Sister thought Miss Honeybear's voice was a little scary. Okay, let's take stock of this room for a second. It has big posters of a cat and a dog for some reason. And what are those little dancing homunculi there? Are those hand puppets? There were all kinds of things Sister liked to do. She had never seen such big jars of paint or such fine blocks. Okay, now I didn't own this book as a child. I bought this copy specifically to do this review with, but... It was at this point that I got one of those those mental lawn darts where you're like, oh, I remember this. And this is where. A whole, a whole barrel, barrel of clay. clay. I remember that image of sister peering into the barrel of clay and thinking, oh no, it's going to reach out and grab her. Also, the way the Y in clay is framed there on the slats, it almost looks like the barrel says, clam. Ew, a barrel of clams! So then the big day finally arrives, and Brother tugs Sister along despite her cold feet. And look at all these bear kids, and all the personality they managed to cram into just these two panels. Look at this grouchy one in the babushka that everyone's trying to grab her lunchbox away. This nervous one with the glasses who doesn't want to be seen. Now comes one of the real questions of this book. We've seen the Bear Country School. It looks like a... Little Red Schoolhouse, the kind that you're supposed to carry your books in a strap to and bring an apple for the teacher and all that. But this room is only big enough for about as many kids as were on the bus in the first place. Is the Bear Country School just a kindergarten? What happened to Brother? Wait, is that him? I didn't think he was in kindergarten too. Oh, and then the teacher tells the story of the three bears. It's a story of three bears who went for a walk while their porridge cooled, and then when they came back, nothing had changed because there were no such things as humans. So Sister has a great day where she paints and builds with blocks and reads books and makes a giant clay donut. Tomorrow she's going to make a giant clay Homer Simpson to eat it. And of course, the next day, Sister is super excited to get on the bus and... <laughs> well... I sense Stan drew one of these pages and Jan drew the other. The bears are a little off model in this picture. <laughs> Was it really necessary to give both of them bedroom eyes? And again, that's only about as many little bears as were in the kindergarten classroom. Maybe this bus services several different schools and brother has another stop. I don't know. And off they drive with a pneumatic whoosh. 
stopping at every train crossing as mandated by state law. And all the bus driver had to say was, Mmm!